Well, hello everybody. I am delighted to join you today at Innisfree Farm and Botanic Garden on Vancouver Island to present a short uh, film here about making fire cider. So this is for the purposes of horticulture therapy. This is an activity that you could absolutely be doing with your clients. Um, the equipment, as you can see, is extremely simple. Um, I have prepped a little bit in advance to make it easier. Notably, I have pre-ground my horseradish because it will make me cry on camera if I don't do that. This is what it looked like to start with. We have just dug that lovely horseradish. Before I started, I prepped all my equipment and I sharpened my blade and I cut my finger. So first thing I'm going to do is put some gloves on because uh, hygiene requires. So fire cider. It's a very old recipe. It's been probably in the common domain in folk medicine for a few hundreds of years at least. It was first written up and given the proper name fire cider back in the 1970s by a herbalist in America called Rosemary Gladstar. And she has been teaching about making fire cider for many years and many people have made their own recipes. I'm going to show you a sort of a basic recipe today that you can play with and make up your own from. The nice thing for doing this in horticulture therapy is that again the equipment is easy, the supplies are very mundane and routine, things that you're likely to have easy access to, and if you have clients who can participate in activities then they can certainly be chopping the vegetables and mixing things, and if you have clients who are more passive recipients of the horticulture therapy they can watch while you do it. At the end of it there will be a couple of weeks waiting and then a tasting and that's always fun of course for clients to get to actually taste the fruits of their labor. So fire cider is a very simple recipe it's just apple cider vinegar and we're using a really nice organic unpasteurized vinegar so it does have the mother at the bottom it does have some live ferment going on and that will help with our recipe here. What we're going to do is to put a whole lot of herbs and spices into a large jar, cover them with vinegar, leave them two weeks, strain it off, and that's our product. It really is that simple. But what goes into it does matter. Obviously, fire cider has some very particular ingredients. The first thing is the horseradish. This has been pre-grated. We use the food processor because when you dig this, this is actually quite a small horseradish in our garden. I will say that they've gotten larger than that. We scrub that off and when we grate it, it releases a lot of volatile oils and you can really start sneezing and your eyes will start streaming. Hence, we're doing this outside and we pre-grate it so that we wouldn't be doing that on the camera. So very, very simple. We're just going to take our large clean jar and I have in your recipe some uh, proportions and some amounts that I will be honest and tell you that I don't usually weigh or measure anything in this recipe. I just kind of go for it. So for this large jar, I think we're going to use two cups. I think my recipe says one, but we're going to go for two. Two cups of grated horseradish. And we have pre-peeled our garlics. This is some of the garlic we've harvested uh, just recently in the last couple of weeks. These, by the way, are not elephant garlics. They're actually regular garlics, but they are grown at Innisfree. So you get something like that, which is a very large garlic. We have uh, a practice here of um, what we call probiotic gardening, meaning that we grow the microbiome of the soil in order to grow healthy plants. And all I'm doing here is cutting my garlic up. This garlic is going to turn blue in the vinegar. There is a reaction, a chemical reaction between the vinegar and the garlic, and it will come out this rather extraordinary sort of coppery, verdigris, blue-green. I'm going to chop up my onions. It's a very rough chop. You're not trying to do a pretty dice or anything very fine or delicate here. Just a really coarse chopping. And again, I've got two large onions here. If they um, are organic, you can leave the inner skins on, although the outer skin should go. Red onions have a lot of quercetin, which is very good as an antioxidant. 
but the yellow onions are also great. Oh, that's quite a lot in there, isn't it? And then a good whack of ginger. This is going to be fiery. It's called fire cider. And it's called that for a reason, because it is hot. And again, there's no fixed recipe, just guidelines. And you make it up as you go along, depending on what you have. I always like to put some citrus. This is organic, so I'm going to put all the skins and everything. Maybe I'll just take that little bit off. And uh, a couple of oranges. Again, just a very rough chop. Like that. Oh, maybe not that bit. And a lemon. Again, this is organic, so I'm going to use the whole skin. That's where all of the medicine really is in your citrus. The limonene, the antioxidants are all in the skin. And so if you're doing this in a horticulture therapy context, this is also an opportunity to talk a little bit about health issues, about why eating your citrus is useful and why garlic is good for you. And at the end of the day, this is a product for supporting the immune system. This is a product that you can use in your kitchen as a vinegar that is salad dressings, marinades and sauces, but you can also take a tablespoon or two in a cup with some hot water and honey and make a drink. And that is something that will boost up your immunity and your resilience and your resistance through the winter. If nothing else, with this much garlic and ginger and chili and so on, nobody's going to come too close to you. So you won't catch things that way either. Um, bay leaves. I've got some fresh bay leaves here. That's probably enough. I've got some dried herbs here that I just had in the kitchen. This is rosemary and oregano. Or if I was in England, where I'm originally from, I would say oregano. And then a variety of um, additions. And again, no, no right or wrong. I'm going to give us here a couple of cinnamon sticks. I'll just shove those down in there. We'll throw some coriander seeds in. We grow this here. And so we have an abundance of coriander. So we might as well put some of that in just for fun. We've got some star anise. Now I love star anise. I put it in lots of things. It's a favorite spice. And I'm not crushing it or anything. I'm just dropping it in. My jar is getting full, but of course it will all sort of sink down with the vinegar added. Some black peppercorns. You can see that I'm a casual cook. This is about having fun. It's not about following rules. If you're teaching this in your horticulture therapy program, you will probably want to have a little bit more consistency so that people can reproduce it at home. But if you're just making it for yourself, there's no real rules. How much chili should we put in? Hmm. Oh, let's put lots and a bit more. <laughs> If you have fresh chilies, of course, they're probably the best, but this is what we had right now. We didn't have a great chili crop in the uh, greenhouse this year, so I'm just using dried chili. That's it. How easy was that? Let's pour the vinegar. So some of the permutations with this, you can put turmeric, you can put, and that turns it quite orange. You can put all sorts of different herbs and spices according to what you have in the garden. Um, of course, I've put oregano. You could be putting thyme, you could be putting hyssop and savory and tarragon and all of those aromatic leafy herbs, the, the sort of Mediterranean type herbs. They all have volatile oils. Those come out into the vinegar. So this is going to be a very flavorsome product at the end. I'm going to fill it quite full. And over time, the um, vegetables will sort of shrink down a little bit in here and the whole thing will lower and I might add some more vinegar in a few days just to top it up. Right now everything's just floating. And when you have made this product you're going to put the lid on. Look at that. Isn't that the most beautiful thing? I just love this. See, everything's moving in there. I'm going to just let it sit for a little while and then later I'll start shaking it. And then I'm going to shake it every day for a couple of weeks. You do want to have a lid that fits tight or maybe shake it over a sink in case it leaks out a little bit. 
because you want to really get movement of the vinegar across the plant material for best extraction. You're going to leave that a couple of weeks. You are going to label it. You should always label everything you make with the name of the product. In this case, you can sort of see what's in it, so you don't need to worry too much about the ingredients or at least have them recorded somewhere else so that if you make a proper label for your finished product, you know what was in it. I've just made a very simple fire cider and the date so that I know in two weeks time to take that all to pieces, strain it off. So I'll line a colander or a sieve with a cheesecloth or a kitchen towel and pour this through. Bottle up the vinegar, that's your finished product, but you're left with all of this vegetable, fruit, spice mash. And if you're brave, what you can do is you can put that in the food processor, maybe pick out the sticks of cinnamon, the woody stuff, put it in the food processor, puree it down. And now you have a really spicy, hot um, paste, really, which we have used in the kitchen in a number of ways. Mostly, we love to put that on salmon fillets. So we'll take a whole uh, piece of salmon and smear it over with this hot, spicy paste, bake that in the oven, um, and it's sort of like a horseradish crusted salmon, and it's really quite delicious. Um, so none of that is wasted, even though you're only really making the vinegar aspect for your medicine um, or for your kitchen product, the mash is not wasted. So the very last part of this recipe, if you wish, is to add honey. I don't usually add it at this stage. I'll wait until I've strained it off and then sweeten to taste. Of course, if you're vegan, you could be using maple syrup. You could even put a stevia leaf in here to sweeten it up. I personally don't use the sweeteners, but many people prefer that, especially at the time of use. So if you're pouring out a tablespoon or two of the finished product, the fire cider, and you want to add hot water to make a drink, which is a very traditional remedy. Apple cider vinegar and water is sort of an old wives' tale that works for muscle pain and arthritis. There's acid, fruit acids, malic acid actually in the apple that is very anti-inflammatory in joints and muscles. So people do drink this and to make it more palatable, a little sweetener is perfectly acceptable. So a tablespoon or two of vinegar, cup of hot water and honey to taste. So it really is that simple. And again, you can play with all your recipes, um, adding things that you like. The essence of this is vinegar, horseradish, and garlic. That's kind of the base recipe. And then everything else is just to taste and just for fun. You're gonna leave that two weeks and then strain it off. And that's your fire cider.